My name is Milan Tansi. I'm a PhD student from the Polytechnic University of Turin. And uh, I'm doing six months here uh, of research uh, under the supervision of the Professor Yves Granvalet. And um, today I'm going to present the, the, the work that uh, we published some months ago, and it's called Vision Transformer for Femur Fracture Classification. Wait just a moment. Voila, so I can see also. Okay, now I'm going to start. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start with the introduction. So I'm going to give an overview of the problem. Uh, I'm going to speak about the classification that we used, the data set, and some baselines. Then I'm going to switch to the methods. And as we applied vision transformer, I'm going to start a little bit with transformer in general and self-attention to give a general idea. Then I'm going to switch to the vision transformer. We're going to then present the results that we had. And finally, I'm going to do a, a broad discussion on uh, different aspects, uh, in particular with limitation and uh, future works about this uh, uh, paper. So let's start with the fact that uh, musculoskeletal disease represents the most common cause of long-term disability worldwide. In particular, we also know that uh, in 2010, the, the hip fracture, the incidence of hip fracture was 2.7 million per year globally. We also know that uh, the current evaluation and classification of the fractures uh, strongly affect future patient, uh, patient treatment. But what can be the problem that arise during a, a, a diagnosis? They can depend from different uh, um, uh, reasons. Um, one can be, uh, for example, the, 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 um, the, the quality of the X-ray image. So the, for example, the superimposition of soft tissues in obese patients on, or complex patient positioning. But it can also depend from the working environment. So it's, it's usually really stressful, especially in emergency departments. So they have to be fast. And also, not always a second opinion is available. Uh, and finally, also the intrinsic complexity of the classification. It's, I'm going to show you in the next slide that it's actually a very hard classification. So the idea is to implement a computer assisted diagnosis um, that could uh, directly impact on patient outcome. So this is not a new idea. Uh, when we started this work, we, we first did a, a, a broad literature review and initial approaches uh, for, for this task focus on conventional machine learning techniques such as uh, edge detection, hue lines, something like that. But after uh, the introduction of AlexNet uh, in 2012, the research totally switched to CNN. Uh, but unfortunately, most of the work focused on binary classification that has actually very low impact on, on, on the, the diagnosis because it's quite easy to distinguish bet between a broken and a, an unbroken bone, but it's not easy to classify in different types of fractures. And we found just four previous work that tackle multi-class classification, but the results are still not optimal. Uh, continuing in this uh, temporal thing, uh, after uh, in 2017, uh, a new paradigm called Transformer was introduced, uh, formerly for NLP, natural language processing. And then in 2020, uh, the vision transformer was proposed because the first vision architecture based on self-attention, which reaches the state of the art in many tasks. So can you apply self-attention to this problem to stream of factor classification? Uh, before explaining the methods and everything, we need uh, three things. So we need, of course, a classification. You know, we need uh, to, to, to understand how to classify different types of fractures. Then we need a, a data set and we need some baseline to compare our work. So. We decide to use the. There are different classification of uh, type of fractus. The our classification is the most recent, and um, it has a characteristic characteristic of being hierarchical. Uh, so what I mean with hierarchical, the you take an X-ray image and you first divide it with unbroken and broken, and then the broken uh, bones are uh, divided in subgroups uh, depending of the area that is involved in the in the fracture. So you can see the difference between the A, B, and C, and then there are subsequent level. So here I'm showing just a subsequent level of, for A and B because the C fractures are super rare and we didn't have enough, enough sample to, to use them in, in this work. And I'm also stopping to A1, A2 at this level, but actually uh, the classification continues with A1.1, etc. But we didn't have enough samples for, for, for continuing this. It would be, of course, a future work as soon as we, as we collect more images. So you, uh, sorry, can I ask Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, so so you, you just... Uh, the classification between B2 and B3 because that's no between A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, and right. unbroken. Because uh, and, and is that normal that we have the impression that the second uh, 
back to B2 the same but B3 uh, or yeah I had I had the same impression of every type of yeah. factory usually they, they're super similar yeah. uh, in general and if you if you didn't study 10 years about this you can okay. recognize I'm going to show some samples later so you can also see that the but that's not the same no no they're not the same, <laughs> it's not the same. The, the, I think the, the difference is the, the displacement okay. in B2 and B3 so that in the B2 the, the, the factories also it also move the bones by the B3 now I think I'm not so it's really a super yeah, uh, yeah, in, in precise, uh, layer, yeah it's super, okay. super precise and uh, if you have some question maybe yeah, you yeah. can ask also also uh, in French uh, or in French uh, yeah. I don't understand as well yeah I think I guess I hope <laughs> uh, so um, then we, we start to create the data set uh, that is actually quite important in all uh, machine learning application especially in, uh, in in the medical field so we started with uh, 2,600 images, full images, and the, the, the full images can present both femur or just one femur. We first did um, a cleaning of the data set to exclude the uh, image containing prostheses with poor lighting condition, with the femur partially hidden, with radar review, and as I already said, the C fractures that were actually just three in all these images. After cleaning, we end up with this number of images, and then we train an um, object detector, a YOLO, network to detect the two uh, different um, head of the femur so left and right femur after this and after some correction because if, of course it wasn't perfect uh, we extract uh, approximately 2000 <coughs> of images of the two femur and we flipped uh, one of them I, if i remember correctly the right one and we ended up with more than 4000 of images of cropped images then we divided, of course, in the different subclasses. Uh, and as you can see, the, the first thing that you can notice is the uh, strong imbalance of this data set. So unbroken class has um, 2,000 images, while, for example, the B3, that is the, one of the most rare, just 100 samples. And this is the thing that I'm going to discuss in the limitation uh, at the end of this presentation. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Is there, like, when you have one disease, like A1 or 2 or whatever, can you have another broken bomb? So you can, can you have, like, two different uh, broken bones into the same image or is this the other one uh, it's super rare that someone broke both the images okay usually no usually okay. it's just one is broken and one is unbroken i don't remember if maybe there was one case when both the femur were yeah, broken no but usually it's just uh, you take one and you put in the broken class so you can also see the uh, uh, balance between the, the fact that half of them were unbroken and half of them were uh, have some fractures so uh, can okay. I have a question about, sorry, sorry, just uh, one more question in the yeah, yeah. right? About your exclusion criteria, you mentioned um, contains processes, but I'm curious about the poor lighting condition. How did you define this poor lighting condition? Well, actually, uh, the, 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 all this cleaning phase was done to the, to the, uh, by the team of specialists, uh, together with, uh, with our team, but it was like, uh, I don't remember exactly. It was just like uh, there were some images. We, we didn't exclude all the images that, that were quite dark or quite uh, uh, have quite light. But it was just some images that you, even after uh, doing some process, pre processing, you just couldn't recognize. It was just black with some something around. So it was okay. just uh, it, it was quite uh, not super technical the exclusion. It was just we saw the data set and we 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 decide what what to exclude and what to not exclude. Okay. Thank you. Um, hello, uh, Amir and Nadia. I saw that uh, Amir and Nadia just uh, joined us. So Amir is the, in charge of the uh, Cyclop AI uh, team uh, for Vinci Autoroute, and Nadia is in the in, you know. um, she, So we were just talking about the the femur fracture. You can can you just put back the so that's the data set. But can you just put back the image with the with the well, this one. So the, the meaning of the oh, you can do a very yeah, very quick, quick shot. Uh, yeah, I'm presenting zoom. my latest paper. And, Thank you so much. Uh, my latest paper and the, and the and the aim is to classify the different type of fractures in uh, unbroken A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. And you can see here the different type of fracture, the classification, and the different classes depends from the uh, area where the fracture is, and also from other factors that actually I don't know. Um, was super precise because it's something that specialists know. And I was about to present the data set. No, I've already presented the data set creation. So the only thing that you, you can notice from the data set that is pretty imbalanced. So we have a lot of images for the unbroken class while uh, the, a low number of images for the other class. And okay, I, I was about to, to, to show you some examples of the different type of fractures. Uh, 
these are some samples for A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. And actually, it's quite easy maybe to distinguish between the unbroken class and all the other classes. But as soon as you try to distinguish between the different factors, you need years and years of experience uh, to, to classify them. Um, then some baselines uh, to, to compare our work. And uh, actually, the baselines came from a, the, the first paper that I published when I started. It was uh, not after two years and a half of PhD, I, I realized that it was quite a simple uh, paper. And it was just we just tried um, uh, some different uh, pre-trained network to for flat classification. And at the end, we select exception as the best performing one. And um, <clears throat> we take this block and uh, <clears throat> we use it to, to build a um, uh, cascade CNN, hierarchical CNN. Uh, so there are different CNN in cascade. And the first one classified between unbroken and broken, the second one between A and B, and then between subclasses. Uh, when we start, when we first proposed this approach, it was uh, the data set was quite smaller and we didn't have the last uh, layer. So the results were, were quite good also because probably in this case, the, the results with the hierarchical CNN, as I'm going to show later, are worse than with normal approach, uh, probably because as soon, the more level you are, the more the error uh, uh, move forward in the in the network. So the error uh, uh, keep increasing. So we, we use these two as baselines. And OK, now I'm going to discuss the methods. And as we use the vision transformer, I'm going to start to give an intuition of transformer. I'm not I'm not uh, I don't work with uh, natural language processing, but as the transformer was introduced for NLP, I'm going to use an example uh, based on NLP. So the, the original architecture um, is composed by a series of encoder and a series of decoder. Uh, it takes a, as input a, a sentence and they return a translation. Uh, the, 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 the main block uh, of the encoder is composed by a multi-head self-attention block and a feed for a neural network. Uh, the multi-head self-attention block is actually the, the true novelty introduced uh, uh, by the transformer. So I'm going to um, discuss a little bit in, um, in detail. So very uh, uh, to have an intuition of how self-attention is, is, is a method to understand the relevant words, words in a sentence in relation to the one you're currently processing. So you're processing the word, the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired. How do we know how the word it refers to in the sentence? For us humans, it's quite easy. It's not easy to make a machine understand this relation between different words in a sentence. So when the model is processing the word it, self-attention allows to associate it with the word animal and also the other relevant words. And self-attention is based on three matrices. And maybe you put an algae. Um, you can think uh, of it as searching through a filing cabinet. So the query of the, we are processing the word it. So the query uh, uh, of the word it is the note uh, with a tag of the topic uh, we are researching. Um, we, we are um, searching through the file cabinet and we look at the keys, which are the labels of all the folder inside the cabinet. When we, ma we match the, the tag with the note, we take out the content and that's the values vector. So that's the, 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 the general idea of how query, key, and value works. But then I'm going to explain a little bit more in, deep, in depth. Um, so in details, uh, we apply self-attention to the sentence uh, thinking machine, so just two words. And we want to compute self-attention for the word thinking. So we start with um, words. And uh, using some vocabulary, we embed them to tokens. And we end up with one vector, one representation for, for each word. Then. We have three matrices, the, the, the one named uh, WV in the image, and that are shared and learnable. And the first thing that you do is multiply each of the input vector for these three matrices and obtain one query, one key, and one value for each token. Then uh, to compute, multi compute self-attention for the first token, you multiply the key of the first token for the, uh, sorry, the query of the first token with the key of all the other token, including itself. This is the idea of, uh, the key, the query is the um, tag, and uh, when you're searching for the word thinking, you're searching through a filing cabinet, and you use the query of that word to compare with the key of all the other words. So you compute this value that is called a score value, and it's actually the amount of focus to put on a, on, on a word. Uh, then you do some, you divide the, um, was just to, to for a constant to regularize. I don't even remember why they did this, but they tried different constant, and at the end, that was the best choice. And they passed through a softmax. So you obtain two values in this case that sum to uh, one. 
you multiply the result for the value vector and then you sum the two value vector and you obtain the self-attention vector for the word for the first word then you're going to do the same for the second word and you're going to obtain a self-attention vector for the second word and the three matrices that you use are the same are learnable and shared uh, this is the the the, the, the formula that summarize uh, all this process um, some consideration uh, in, about the four matrices as uh, something that I have already said in the example, but maybe here is a bit too, more technical. So Q is the representation of the current token used to score against all the other token. K can be seen as a set of labels that we match against Q in our search for relevant words. V contains the actual word representation. And S, score, determines the amount of focus to put on each token. Uh, actually, th there's a reason why it's called multi-head, because usually uh, you use more than one head for that uh, to, to have multiple representation. So, um, in this case, oh sorry, in this case we're using um, seven head. You can see, uh, not eight head. So we start from zero. Uh, so um, uh, you will have one set of matrices for each of the representation. So at the end, you went, you and then uh, we you will end up with um, uh, eight different um, self attention vector for the first word. The problem is that um, uh, the, 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 one of the characteristics of the transformer architecture is that uh, before and after each module, you should have the same image. Uh, you said that the same dimension, sorry. So uh, a, a, a new matrix, the W0, is applied to, to, uh, to compute the, the one self-attention uh, vector for, uh, from the seven output of the multi-head attention. Uh, also, this matrix is learnable, of course. Okay. This was an intuition of uh, the transformer and self-attention. And actually, in this paper was applied the, um, the vision transformer, which is the first vision solution leveraging self-attention. Or uh, uh, What's the problem with images? The fact is that you see that self-attention is used to, com to compute the relation between different um, uh, words in a sentence, for example. You cannot do the same with pixel for images, because it would be too much expensive in terms of computation. So the idea that the, they proposed uh, was to divide the image into grid and focus on patch, patches of the image. So uh, the, 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 the full um, architecture of the vision transformer works like this. You take an image, you uh, divide it into patches, then you project this patch, each of the patches. You add an extra learnable class embedding and a, a positional embedding. You pass to the, um, you pass to the encoder. And then you attach an um, MLP head for classification. It's a bit slow, it's animation. Um, th this is the encoder of the transformer. If, if I remember correctly, it's one of the aim also of the, the, the people that proposed the vision transformer was to stay the more close as possible uh, with the original implementation. So the encoder block is, uh, if I remember correctly, is, is exactly the same except of the fact that the normalization is before the two blocks and not after. Uh, you can see the multi-head attention block and the MLP block, and also uh, some uh, residual connection. Okay, so after explaining all this, the main idea behind the use of transformer is is, is the fact that uh, uh, when we when we were discussing with a team of uh, radiologists uh, uh, with whom we worked with this work, um, and we explained them how self attention work, they said that maybe the approach of comparing each token with each other token is kind of similar to the one used by specialists when classifying fractures. So they look at the different at the relation of the different part of the image. So we wanted to try this approach. Uh, but before before studying, we had uh, this huge limitation of vision transformer. Is any uh, one of the reasons why it was that that criticized in general is that it has been shown that it work well just with huge data set. Uh, with small data set in the low data regime, CNN still uh, perform better than uh, vision transformer. So of course our data set is not huge. And uh, we have two we have two alternatives. And the first one is uh, to use pre-trained networks. Uh, it was demonstrated to work also with a uh, small data set. And, uh, or to add a convolutional step before self-attention. And this is a method that was uh, introduced by a paper uh, that presented a compact convolutional transformer. And it just, the patch extraction phase, it was substituted by a, a, some CNN layer and you just uh, use the futures as patches to give to the, um, to the, to the vision transformer encoder. Uh, it was demonstrated to work pretty well with small data set, but it didn't apply in our case. You can see the results from the CCT are very low, uh, while these are the four pre-trained versions that we tested. 
and um, the name came B stands for base, Y L for large, and it depends. It's just uh, the number of parameters, and the number is the um, B sixteen means base with a patch size of sixteen by sixteen pixel. So you can see that the results when using sixteen by sixteen pixel are quite uh, better than the other one, probably because the um, one idea could be that the, the fracture are quite tiny inside the image, so the, the lower the patches, the, the, the easiest is to, to detect them, but it's just position. Um, so just to summarize all the work, we had full X-ray images. We applied the object detector to crop the two different parts. We flipped them and we built a data set. Then we trained two baselines, a flat CNN and a hierarchical CNN, and we used this comparison. We trained the vision transformer, and after uh, compared with the baselines, we visualize the tension map that are methods to uh, visualize where the network is putting his attention during the classification that they're similar to grad cam, uh, something like that. And um, we also did a, a specialist evaluation because actually th this work was supposed to be an actual um, something that could be used in everyday routine. So some, something that could assist uh, specialists in diagnosis. So we asked to specialists to evaluate the uh, fractures with and without the help of our system. So some results, pretty, I'm going, I will go pretty fast. Uh, these are the two baselines, uh, the, the results of the two baselines. We're not using accuracy because data set uh, is super imbalanced. And the Euracular CNN performed way worse than the, 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 the normal one. So we were actually a bit surprised about it, but then we realized that it makes actually sense. And these are the results with the vision transformer. So the improvement is um, around 20% for all the metrics. Um, and uh, we used at the end the bit uh, L16 implementation. So this is the specialist evaluation that is actually probably one of the most important part of this work because it's, it's, we, we we're not proposing anything new in this work. We're just using technologies and we, we just wanted to build something that could be helpful in everyday routine. So this is quite important. We, we asked to 11 uh, specialists, seven residents and four uh, radiologists to evaluate with different years of experience, you can see, to evaluate 150 images with and without the help of the system. Uh, the improvement that we had was uh, too big. In, in, <laughs> we, didn't, we were super surprised about the fact that it, it increased of 30%. And uh, in, the, in the limitation section, I'm going to explain a bit how we did this uh, evaluation and probably the limitation that also bring this to, to having such a, especially from students, you can see a, a, like around 40% of uh, improvement in evaluation. It's mm, too, quite too much, I think, uh, for, for, for this. Uh, okay, let's start with a discussion. Uh, first of all, mm, the attention map. So the attention map, is, it's, uh, as I already said, it's a way, I don't know if you can see from, in the presentation, but the lighter part in the images are the part in where the, 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 the network is putting attention while doing classification. And uh, we work, we look at them with the specialist and they confirmed uh, um, that the, the, this, the, the network is actually focused on the correct part. So in the trochanteric area for the A class, in the neck and the greater trochanter for the B class, and around the whole cortex for the unbroken class. Um, I, I do not see this difference to be quite honest uh, most of it mostly of the time and one one thing that they didn't they even they didn't notice is some pattern between uh, uh, different subclasses so they didn't spot any pattern between a1 a2 they did just look all uh, similar uh, we also did a comparison with state of the art and it was kind of fast because there were just two works uh, that tackled this problem exactly this problem uh, the first one use a, a, a flat uh, inception network, but followed by um, also an LSTM, because th this work also leveraged text annotation that usually are very hard to collect. Um, the other set was quite small. Uh, with some classes have just one sample, for example, the B3 was just one sample, and they obtain a F1 score of 50%. The second one, uh, they used, uh, again, an inception network, but they, they train it together with an attention model that was used for object localization. So they, do, they were trained together. And the data set was uh, a little bigger than the, before, than the one before, but still, for example, E3 fractures just have uh, 15 samples. They obtained 68% with the, but not considering the class unbroken. So it was uh, results for six class classification. 
Okay. Um, all the part that I've just presented, it's something that uh, either really uh, happened to me to present in the past, but all this part uh, was uh, specially made for Datacraft because I, I know the idea is uh, to give suggestions uh, to presentations, and I'm going to discuss the limitation uh, uh, in depth because that there's actually uh, th this work uh, was made one year ago. So we have been working on this uh, for, for, since one year, and we, we discovered a lot of limitation that uh, are actually present in this work. So the first one, as I already said, is the evaluation. So the evaluation was done through a web interface. And so first problem is that we want to, to, to demonstrate that this tool could be helpful in stressful situation, not in a situation when the, the specialist is sitting on the desk uh, looking at the femur. So uh, we should do more uh, everyday testing. So in the in the working environment, and the other problem is that we had we waited just two weeks be be between the two evaluation. So uh, maybe we should have waited more, or also one idea could be to use um, a different set of images with the same level of difficult, but it wouldn't be. How do you say that? Uh, uh they have exactly the same level of difficulty and also you should ask specialists it's not easy to work with in general with specialists so uh you should you have to try to ask them the the the, the less possible uh so this was the first limitation and also was one of the reasons why we obtained this um uh very big improvement uh, one thing that but still, I don't know. We, we, we gave also to the, the specialists the, 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 the probabilities of the neural network. So uh, one idea could be also that they focus more on the image when they see the network was not 99% sure of the prediction. But still, 30% uh, of uh, improvement was uh, really a lot. Uh, then you, you saw that the data set was very, very unbalanced. Mm -hmm um we 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 used over sampling in here after trying also under sampling and data augmentation but uh with data augmentation actually had worse results uh one idea could be that when you use when you use uh, some complex data augmentation technique you can actually create fake fractures but just a supposition also this and one solution could be to use generative adversarial network uh th this uh at the left is a, a latent work in the latent space of an uh, uh Style GAN 2 that was trained on, on uh, images of femur factors. Uh, what's the problem? That generative adversarial networks relies uh, uh, also an, uh, an insane amount of image to be able to generalize the distribution. And we cannot, uh, of course, we cannot use the 100 images of the B3 fractures so for, to, to generate uh, uh, samples. So, one thing what we did here was to use all the data set and produce images. In completely uh, not it, it was not conditioned so it produced images that you don't know what classes they belong to and then the specialist could divide them in uh, in different classes but again uh, one problem is that uh, when you just use 4000 of images um, for training a generative adversarial network it, it's possible that it's actually not creating new samples it's not generalizing but it's just just uh, looking at the distribution and try to uh, in, in a way just producing copies of the, the data set that you have so like it, again we we asking to specialists to evaluate maybe 4000 of images that maybe then understand that this was uh, this is completely useful it's it's not an approach that we, we can uh, we can uh, tackle so still we don't know how to to proceed in this direction um another problem is that we are actually not leveraging the hierarchical data architecture in this approach and uh, we are ignoring some information that could be very useful, especially for underrepresented leaf nodes. Something that we that I'm actually working uh, here during my period uh, in Paris uh, are some ideas like uh, a hierarchical loss or um, some idea that I'm going to present uh, in the next slide. So uh, hierarchical loss that um, we, did, we also did more than this, but that, that, that was the easiest um, approach that we apply. So if we have a tree. We just uh, in, in this in this work we are using a, a, a cross entropy applied just for the uh, fine predictions so the fine classes. But one, one idea could be to use different uh, cross entropy uh, for each layer of the of the tree. So we can have a, one cross entropy that classify between A and B and one that classify between different subclasses. Um, uh, we have just two levels here, but uh, this can be applied for uh, this can be applied with. Uh, and the number of uh, levels, and you can also weigh the different cross entropy. 
uh, actually the work that I'm doing here, it's, it's, uh, we are working in general with a hierarchical structure. We are not focusing on the framework uh, right now. Uh, the idea is to, to work with general structure, general hierarchical structure, and then try to apply to, to this. Uh, one other, just a question. Uh, when you are an architecture like this, I'm not very used to the hierarchical structure. Yeah. At each step, do you put people also? No, but this, this is not the architecture of the network. Okay. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is the architecture of the, of, the, of the tree. Yeah. The network, you can imagine using a normal, uh, yeah, but whatever I, architecture. So you have, for example, three steps for three different trees. Right? Yeah, you know, you just, you just, put, you, just uh, you just compute the loss as the sum of the two loss. Okay, so at the end. You yeah, are not yeah, yeah. No, no, you don't, you don't have intermediate. Okay. No, no, no. It just, this is just a tree structure, it's not the architecture structure. Um, one other, one other thing is uh, that, especially for uh, uh, the me uh, medical domain, but in general, it could be uh, for, the, for diagnosis, it could be useful to have uh, something that stops the prediction uh, when it's not sure anymore. So you are classifying the, the tree, you realize that you're not able, that rock realize that, that it's not able to classify between A1, A2, A3, so it just stops at A. Uh, so the idea could be to use a confidence score at each level, um, but still it, this is quite a new idea uh, that we had. And um, another thing is to adapt the metric to this problem. So we are using uh, metrics that just relies off on the precise prediction, but when I, we, we, if we want to something that also stops, we, we need something that is actually, uh, we need a, a metrics that compute the, 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 the the accuracy, for example, at different uh, level, not at just uh, the, the finest level. So one idea is this, for example, mm, if you want to compute this accuracy between two nodes of a tree, you can just take the common ancestor, for example, let, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna, okay, for example, if, if, if the true label is B1 and the network predict B2, you find the common ancestor, so B in this case, you compute the depth, that is the distance the, from the, the root from the B, and you just um, you just uh, you, you divide by the height of the tree, and in this way, in, if the prediction is perfect, so if if the correct is, uh, label is B1 and you predict B1, the accuracies get a value of one. If it's B1 and you predict B2, the accuracies get a value that it's for example 0.8. If the correct value is B1 but the prediction is A3, you get uh, zero. Uh, Right now, it's it's not super easy to explain with just two layer, but if if you have more layer, you understand that uh, how this different. It, it's just a matrix that adapts to um, to the structure. In, in a normal situation, if if the result is B one, and you predict B, if the correct label is B one, and you predict B two, you got zero as uh, as metric. But it, we 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 still think that it, it, we should uh, we should give some importance of uh, also for to, to medium prediction. Uh, finally, this slide I was super indecided to to if, to show uh, to to you because it could be super stupid. I, I still don't know. Uh, it's it's a newest idea. Uh, reading a paper recently, um, the idea of this paper was to uh, it, they presented this parallelism between the hierarchy and the, how a CNN works. So uh, we, we know that CNN, the first layer, they 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 try to look at the the, the most general characteristic of the images and then they they go more in particular. And the, the, this paper um, present the fact that this could be quite uh, um, used as a parallelism with the fact that at, uh, with the hierarchy at the beginning to divide uh, in different, in, in the main classes, let's say, you look at more general um, characteristic and then you switch to more particular characteristic to understand the different type of tiny fracture, for example. So this was just a, a slide that uh, I made to understand with a, a very basic uh, CNN. But the idea should be something like that. You have some layers, you train some layers to predict the course classification, to, to predict the, 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 um, the, the first layer of classification. So then you freeze this layer and you train these other layers to predict the fine classification. So the idea is that the first three are forced to learn the more general characteristic of the hierarchy and then the, the, the subsequent one of the, the, more, the more particular one. And you can do this for uh, whatever level of uh, classification. Then you take uh, the, the, the futures, the representation uh, of all of this um, layer, and you concatenate, you project them, you concatenate them, and you actually ended up with, for example, in this case, with six tokens. And you can also try to apply, you can try to apply uh, multi-head self-attention in this case. So you just want to try to, to find the relation between the different token that 
they can it's, it's possible that they represent in some way the hierarchy but still it, it, it's a quite new idea it could be super stupid and we we, we still have to to think about it so uh, don't judge me for this last uh, slide <laughs> please uh thanks if you have any questions and everything i'm super happy to answer <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, do, do, does anybody have uh, any question uh, online or here? Yeah, I, I have a question related to vision transformer in general. So I have three proposals to those for this okay. year. But uh, there is one thing I'm worrying about is that when you have a conversion of network, the cool thing is that it captures the overall picture and can focus on the structure in the image. And for vision transformers, you cut, you take patches and you're not looking at the overall picture, you're just like, taking patches randomly with a uh, fixed size. And sometimes if you have like uh, images where have like black box, uh, for example, if you have a uh, cell pages mm -hmm. and you have a cell at the middle and mm -hmm. one here, ah, okay. you take like a lot of black, uh, black patches and it doesn't mean anything for the network because it's gonna learn yeah, something yeah. not related to the structure of the image. And for the conversion of network, there is like a fixed structure because you take the overall picture of yeah. the image. So I'm wondering like, if there are like methods in vision transformers that takes uh, that, for example, focus on some patches and not taking them randomly and yes. just like say for example uh, for segmentation or detection and focus on the important part of the image before going into a yeah yeah as I said this this uh, did did you hear the the question online? Uh, if 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 Leonardo, if you could repeat, this would be nice because I mean, coming from distance is a bit difficult. Yeah, the, the question is in general, um, the vision transformer that uh, I've, I've just presented used uh, quite large patches, uh, and so he asked me in, in in very briefly if there is some update on this architecture that can be useful also to focus on mm, smaller details and also to uh, well, you said like filter out the thing that you don't need yeah. in a way. In the yeah, a similar question. yeah, I had a, a similar question. It's really good. Um, the transformer uh, where I developed an uh, NLP uh, to replace uh, LSTM, which focus on uh, keeping in mind some distant points. Yeah. And uh, when you work in general and for your problem uh, with uh, structure, mm -hmm. uh, you're looking for something uh, very local so if you are on the sub, uh, subset uh, yeah. of one, uh, what is important would be in two or just below or in diagonal from the one uh, picture away and not on the, uh, at the opposite of the global image, as he, as he said. Mm -hmm. So do you know why, uh, why your, your, uh, your approach seems to work better than classic CNN? Uh, Okay, I'm gonna um, so okay. okay. Much related to okay. question. Or... First, did you hear the did you hear the question? One? Yeah, yeah. Th this one was clear. Okay, I guess it was closer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, related to your question, as I said, this work was we started this work uh, like one year ago. So we just had the vision transformer at that time, but then I, it, of course, I continue to to be up to date that. And one of the main limitations of vision transformer is that you cannot apply for, for example, segmentation because you cannot make a pixel prediction. So the, the, the first, uh, the, 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 this probably the most important transformer that came out of the vision transformer was the one by Windows that is called the Swing Transformer. And they use a shift window for computing the patches. Uh, but still, now uh, I, I, I don't remember the name of the other one, but after the vision transformer, there was like one paper a day yeah. saying, okay, no, patches is not what you need. You need something, okay. uh, you have something different. You need, uh, uh, okay, the only important thing is the, um, I remember there was this, um, this paper that, use the uh, same exact implementation of the vision transformer, but they substitute the self-attention network with a pooling layer, not learnable, and they had the same results. So they, they said, okay, no, the just imp the only important thing is the structure of the module so that you have this expansion, uh, compression structure. So yeah, this is actually one thing that we have to think about it. Uh, this was just the first uh, approach. For your question, so the, the, your question resume is, why we think that vision transformer works better than CNN in this case? Yeah, uh, from my point of view, I think it's a, a different uh, kind of problem. Mm -hmm. uh, in NLP, you want to focus on something very away. Okay. When you are, yeah, this is not the. I think you're more looking for something local. 
Yeah, like the, 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 usually when they compare the um, uh, CNN with Vision Transformer, uh, but the, the, actually, like, it's still the Vision Transformer. They're still studying it, and there's still a lot of hypotheses, and that's all. And there's no um, a lot of theory, like a certain theory around, uh, around it. Uh, but one thing was uh, that you can you can see that the, the working of CNN with um, having a lot a local receptive field. Uh, it, it seems quite different from the idea of a vision transformer that look at the whole image in in a in a in a, in a, in a how do you say in a once and compare the different relation between the different uh, I don't and we just imagine that um, having a, a a full view you see of of the of the whole images in in in, one, in a, uh, once and finding the relation even if it, yeah in NLP use uh, you need long term long long relation long relationship. Uh, and if you see, like in, in, in this example, the, um, given the fact that the images are, are, are cropped, so in a way, all the all the part on the images are are, are needed. So it, it makes sense to find the relation between all the different patches inside an image. But I'm not sure you ask this. I don't. <laughs> uh, if you wanna ask again, but maybe I also don't know the answer. So. Um, maybe if it's new, uh... yeah, uh, yeah, it's twenty twenty something. Yeah, yeah, it's still completely up, updating every every week. It's something new. Uh, do you have any other question uh, online? I uh, know none for me. Thank you very much for the presentation. <laughs> Me, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, Nadia, go on. I will share your Nadia. So, first of all, Leonardo, like, thanks for the talk. I really enjoyed it a lot. And now, like, I had a look at, like, had a peek on the paper that you that you wrote on this topic. Like, it's super nice. Um, okay, my first question is going to be more on the application side. So, you said that. <clears throat> uh, used for the analysis attention maps but i'm just wondering if you're also using them somehow let's say for the user interface for the radiologist like uh, are you showing the attention maps, uh, showing like, attention maps to the radiologists why they're doing the diagnosis exactly no, yeah like we, we didn't use it but it, it's a thing that we thought about uh, after the work it's a, it's a thing that uh, we, we will do in the future something that we will do in the future and in general, the idea, like how how would the uh, how would the pipeline work? Like, would the radiologist first have a look, like, at a photo, and then like have the assistance from the model, or like directly first have assistance from the model, and then uh, and then have his own opinion? Because then, kind of the question is, yeah, he going to be biased? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. That's it's a, that's not a, not really on the computer vision side. It's more like on the application side. But I'm just wondering because, okay, like, apparently you have already thought about these things, like how, like, this machine-human exactly. interconnection. Yeah, that's true. Now, actually, the idea is that the, the, the radiologists work in parallel. So we we did we never thought about the fact is this if, if it's more important that the radiologists first see the image and then the prediction, or first the prediction then the image. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's quite true. Yeah, I, I think the idea was that. I think the idea, we never talk about this. I think actually, I think the idea was just uh, parallel, like you just uh, you see the image and then you also have the prediction. So yeah, you, you see the image with the prediction. The idea was that one. So you don't see first the images and then the prediction. I see. I see. I see. Well, like in in your case, already like if the model is performing like on the level or better than the, than like the than the average human performance. Like I guess in this case. It doesn't matter much. Okay, and then like um, so as just to make sure that I understood for the problem of training on the small number of images, you use the pre-trained models because this uh, compact uh, vision transformer thing uh, did not did not work exactly. like as well as, uh, as it was hoped, right? Yeah, yeah. But this this, this compact uh, convolution transformer, we also used it for another. I'm, I'm working with some uh, with some PhD in Turing, 
that they work actually they are c civil engineering so they work with tunnel and everything and they're trying to 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 classify the different type of fractures but in 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 galleries uh in, in, okay in, in galleries <laughs> and we also we also here tried the compact convolution transform but it never worked so we have some doubt about the paper that the original paper because they presented some results super good with small images but i don't know what maybe there's something that we missed in the in the implementation or maybe there was something not true in the paper so but that's that's something that could uh, that you could do uh, probably nadia to to look at the tunnel uh not not the traffic but the the fracture in the tunnel no yes exactly <laughs> well we're like right now we're rather more working with the traffic but yeah but that potentially yes yes um because this we work with the tunnels as well uh, uh, I guess my next question, like right now, is more into the hierarchy. Like I have to say that this topic interests me. Uh, what, what is uh, yes, yes. If we could see maybe the slide with the hierarchy, like with the measure, new measure that you were proposing. If I like, if I understand correctly, like it's a measure to take into account the accordance between course and final classification something like this um this one yeah this one yeah right um yeah. i'm also searching from uh for a different tree uh, that i used actually Wait. so uh just to understand again like it's uh yes so you just it's it's a, it's okay okay it's it's a tree distance or it's it's a graph distance from the leaf that you ended to the leaf that you actually want to be. Yeah. Okay, I see, I see. Oh, that's it's, interesting. Yeah, it's it's exists like uh, uh, mm. yeah. The, the 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 easiest way to to explain this uh, this is just to see this and and, and oh, why it's not showing. So there are two different presentation. If you look at this tree. Yeah, the, the, the last thing that I said that I said is just like with, with a normal approach. Um, we just want to, to, to maximize the fine prediction. So the, the label is B1, we want B1. And if the, if the, if the you, network is B2, we're going to give us zero, zero as accuracy of the network. But we want to distinguish the network in predicting A3 and predicting B2, because actually B2 is closer than B1. So it's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's a smaller error in a way. So we I, want see. To I see, I see, I see. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, and were you thinking to maybe just to to add penalization in case like explicit penalization if the course classification and fine grain classification are are not consistent? Can you repeat? Yeah, were you thinking or maybe tried to add an explicit penalization? Mm -hmm. For the cases when the fine grain classification and the course classification do not agree, you see at all. So it mm. may be uh, uh, because, like, okay, like this. I understand, like this works great if you have, like, you you still have like one output head. Yeah. Here, okay. Like for the cases, uh, sorry, because when thinking on the slide, I was still thinking like in, in the part even on the previous slide with the two hats. Oh, okay, okay. In and then seat. I was wondering, yeah, if it makes sense to add, uh, like the pre previous, previous, <laughs> uh, to, to add, uh, to add an explicit penalization. Okay, look, my question is rather like, why? why are you interested in the irregular classification like what is your motivation because you want to use it kind of as additional information for learning or like yeah what is your motivation behind looking at it oh it's just like um like usually when 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 you read papers uh, around uh, around the irregular classification they're they're, um, uh, they're super connected with uh, long take classification so you have that you have some data set where some classes are super yeah, underrepresented. Yeah, you're right. So you just yeah. have a few samples for some classes. And the majority of this work presented hierarchical structure so and structure. having the information of the hierarchy would be really helpful in understanding also the uh, uh, lower classes in a way. Uh, 
and th this mm -hmm. is one of the ideas that we, we could use as we we, we tried the uh, we cannot uh, having more samples as I show you uh, that documentation didn't work. Uh, um, the adversarial network didn't work, so we need to find some other solution to be able to work also with very underrepresented classes. And the idea could be to 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 that to And when talking over with the sampling method, you did the over sampling, right? Yeah, you did over sampling and it didn't work. I see. Yeah, yeah, I see. I suppose for the for the data augmentation for the images types that you have, like it has to be very like a very specific type, like like really uh, the the content related. Yeah, I mean, yeah like I... this one. Um, okay. And also the, the, the pretty they, they are already pre-processed a lot, so they they are really super similar to each other. So also adding a little bit of uh, rotation, for example. If yeah. you have too much, you can just add a sample that actually it's, 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 it's not helping you. It's something, uh... yeah, yeah, or a different, like you know, something really gentle, like or a different uh, crop size or like small yeah. shifts, or it can be like you know, this uh, data augmentation with the uh, image compressions, so mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, also can be helpful. Uh, okay. And regarding the the last uh, idea that you presented, yeah, can I that. maybe uh, can I <laughs> no? But <laughs> I think like it, it might get actually work. Like the, the, like the six tokens that you have here, yeah. they're actually like there's like some structure on them or or not. They're like not structured. Like the the structure itself is is just in the in the CNN itself. Uh, what what do you mean with structure? Uh, uh, the hierarchical structure. Uh, no, the, the token itself. Uh, uh, no, okay, I didn't understand the question. Okay, so like now looking at that because <laughs> I don't have the camera here, but maybe. Okay, so as, as understood, so maybe I understood completely incorrect. But so, uh, for this architecture here, so some. Uh, layers of cnn right. are trained for the yeah, like, for example like for the course classification so actually uh now we think about this output also being a part of the cnn so somehow like cnn also it follows some hierarchical structure so like we want first to extract more general course features exactly. which are enough to do the course classification and then later like fine-grained features also do the fine classification great Okay, and then we do so. Like now, the interesting part. <laughs> so it says like so we project feature maps at dimension, like specific dimension, five hundred twelve, and we concatenate. So then, when you have like this, these projections, these tokens, do they have some? So basically, there is some correspondence. So like we expect that the ones that are earlier in the. Uh, if they're earlier in the CN in the CNN, they are corresponding to more coarse features. We hope, like the the idea could be that one. So the different tokens have different. They they keep the hierarchical characteristic while you do in the, all this process. Okay. So, okay. Then you try to compute the relation between the different the, this this different token, and you try to classify. But still, uh, there are a lot of like problem in this like if you have a lot of level how, how do you adapt this to uh, a changing number of level of classification uh, how do you change yes. what to put the different intermediate uh, so there's a lot of things that we still have to discuss and to understand uh, this is just just a, a very very initial idea it, like is it okay if I ask you to, to share the reference of this paper maybe the the, the, the vision transformer no, no, like the one on the on the hierarchical classification. Wait, or yeah. this is like this is the one that you're working on. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. the reference to something, or this is the idea that you're developing. This is is something we're developing. So the, oh, there's, there's, there's nothing written. There's nothing okay, written. Okay, okay, okay. I thought that. Like, okay, so okay, so the, then then I'll, I'll I'll just follow the. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I, the, the, I can share with you the one where we take the idea. Oh, perfect. Yes, I would love that. 
Okay. Yeah. I'm asking the email and everything. Yeah, yeah, like if if you want, uh, you can either ask uh, Xavier, so for sure he has yeah. it, or I can just type yeah. it here quickly. Yeah, we will send you the, the slides and uh, yeah, okay. we'll put them in the, in the detail. And okay, okay, good. You can uh, add uh, some references as well. Uh, okay. We'll, yeah. share, we'll share them. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks so much. Like, I really enjoyed Okay, thanks. I just have one last question. You, you mentioned that you used GAN to generate two images, right? Mm -hmm. So you take like just all the images or you make it conditional? All the images. We try conditional. Yeah, uh, you, but it doesn't work like with any No, no, it doesn't work at all. And the question, the question right. for Metan was. Uh, yeah, the question was, uh, <laughs> did you try to condition the generative adversary network so they, they produce, uh, uh, you can give it as input to the generative adversary network also the class that you want to produce? Because as you, as you said, the, it, it didn't, we tried, but it didn't work because for, so, for some classes, we just have 100 samples, for example. So the idea was just, also, this is the, the fact that we should use all the images, but then we don't know yeah, what is producing. Which classes. Yeah, and so we have to give them back to the specialists and they have to classify it. It's a very long process and maybe it's completely useless also. Okay. Okay. You want to um, uh, see the email? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay, but then uh, if you don't have any more questions, uh, I will just uh, thank uh, Leonardo for this great talk. And uh, we will share uh, you the, the, the material. Um, yeah. And uh, and uh, if Nadia, you have uh, any question to Leonardo, we can uh, yeah, contact him yeah, yeah, by, by mail or... Okay? Okay. Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.